Yeah, uh, I became infatuated with art uh, um, because of I couldn't understand how 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 could you how when I see a three-dimensional illustration or three-dimensional depiction, any form, or any image, on a two-dimensional surface. You know, I am aware it's an optical illusion, but I found the optical illusion to be quite a fascinating phenomenon. You know, I kind of wanted to know, well, okay, well, you can illustrate three-dimensional forms on a two-dimensional surface, but you have to follow different laws. So I became infatuated with, with, with laws. What makes these things pop up and it looks three-dimensional? Right, and this is, I got into art to kind of understand the, the, the phenomena. And that's where I begin to learn um, like certain areas of, of geometry. Like there's something called vanishing point. You know, vanishing point is the point. There's a point at the horizon. It's like a V, expanding V, where the two receding lines of the V diminishes. And this is like a geometric reference point for illustrating, let's say, um, a commercial art, commercialized area, a city. And this is what gives you the, the reference. And it has to do with diagonal and horizontal lines. Diagonal and horizontal lines are used primarily on a two-dimensional surface to illustrate, to illustrate the three-dimensional optical illusion that we perceive as three-dimensional art on a two-dimensional surface or canvas. There's a lot of diagonal lines. That's from a geometric standpoint. That's like the geometric architecture of art formation is these diagonal lines and these you know it's fascinating and yeah? you have these because we have up down left right front back on the three-dimensional plane but on a two-dimensional surface we don't have up down we have front back left right so that up down is replaced with diagonal diagonal lines perpendicular angles. Everything is sort of slant. You know, it's a fast one. And you have shades. Shades in art now. Shades and light and color. Different shades of darkness. Like how water is illustrated through art is a fascinating phenomenon because water is a, is a mixture of light and darkness. And uh, how water emerges in art on a two-dimensional surface is when a certain you see, with darkness and light, it has to be set, the frequency, the shades have to be set at a very specific opacity. So if the darkness is set at a very specific opacity, and the light is set at a very specific opacity, this is what illustrates water, how water, and technically water is always a color, because there's always something that's reflected from water. So now you know that to illustrate water, you have to get into um, shades. It's a mixture of light and dark, light and dark. You would notice that if you put a very mild version of darkness, if you took a dark shade and you implement a very mild version of that dark shade on, let's say, an object, you will notice from a digital standpoint, you will notice it creates a ripple effect. The color itself begins to ripple. And when you, when you zoom out, you begin to see a, a three-dimensional illustration of the ripple effect in water on a two-dimensional surface and it's a fascinating phenomenon. What caused this three-dimensional interpretation or the optical illusion in the eye is because the darkness that's used, that darkness, that darkness, that opacity, the level of the darkness opacity is so mild and subtle that it, that it creates ripple effect.